worry about the screen's coding when it's active. So go to the intro screen and if remember this has everything that screen manager has. And one of those things is a property called screen state. And if that screen state is equal to active screen state dot active here is where we're going to perform some operations. So if it's active, meaning it's not transitioned on, it's not transitioned off, and it's not removed, it is active, we want to decrease the timer, the screen time, and we want to decrease that by the elapsed game time, which we get from game time, game time. So here we just say screen time is equal to screen time dot subtract and we subtract another time span object which is game span or game time dot elapsed game time and that's all we need to do to subtract time from one object to another so now if the screen time dot total seconds is less than or equal to zero we are done with that screen so we can exit the screen so that's it for the update method and the draw method is going to be pretty complicated so every again I'm focusing on logo but every intro screen will perform the same thing it will intro on it will draw a texture it'll intro off. Now if you're wanting an intro screen to have additional functionality you do not need to do this or have several intro screen parent classes that will do different things. But for this purpose of this tutorial we're just going to cover the basic way to just draw a texture. So we have a sprite batch we need to grab a reference of that from the screen manager and every screen has access to its screen manager when you go to the screen manager you'll see the methods and you'll see when they add, when we add the screen we would set the screen that screen manager equal to this so every screen has a reference to the screen manager object and we get that a sprite batch from screen manager dot sprite batch. If you're not familiar with uh, C sharp enough to know what op references are, basically it's a reference. It's not really a copy. It's just accessing the same memory space. So any modifications you make to a reference object, which is this, will be changed to the parent or object you are referencing which is this and you'll know that from the uh, screen manager update method if we update the screen we get a copy or we get a reference added to the screens to update list and that reference modifies the screen is either dead or transitioning off or transitioning on and that is modified the screen inside the screens uh, list which is up here screens list so reference is any modifications to a reference is uh, made to the actual object itself and every object is a reference every variable can be a reference or can be just a copy So now we need the viewport. Viewport. And this just gets the dimensions of our window. And again, we get that from the screen manager dot game dot graphics device dot viewport. And just like we have a sprite batch, you can create a screen manager dot viewport, but this is how you get to it without that. That's if you just want to deal with all those dots. If you don't, just create a new field in or new property in here called uh, 
public viewport viewport and get it through that way. So back to our draw. Alright, so back to our draw. We have the sprite batch object and we have the viewport object. Now what we need to focus on is to center the texture and again, this is just how I'm going to do it. You can do it a different way. You do not need to center it if you don't want to, but let's just center the texture just so you know how. Now we need a vector to the center of the texture and that just holds the position of the texture. And that's going to be new vector to object. And the texture we're worried of, we are worried about is the texture. We're not worried about the pixel just yet. Now to center it, we need to get the center of the game window and subtract half of the texture's width and half of the texture's height. So to get the center of the game window, we have the viewport dot width divided by two. That's the center of the horizontal direction. We need to subtract that from the texture dot width divided by two. And we do the same thing for the y or the height. So viewport dot height divided by two minus texture dot height divided by two. All right. So now that we have a center texture vector, let's begin the sprite batch. All right. Now we want to create the fading, but we do not want to fade, we do not want to use a fade texture if the logo or texture we are trying to draw fills up the entire game window. That way it will save us some graphics time and CPU time to go into additional method and perform some operations that we do not really need to do. So what I set up is an if statement here. Now if the texture dot width is less than or equal to or yeah, it's less than or equal to less than. So if the texture dot width is less than the viewport dot width. And in my sample, I have not equal to, but let's just make this a little bit better. So the width has to be less than the viewport dot width, which means the texture dot width does not fill up the entire width of the game window. So if it's less than the viewport not width and or you can use or either way I use or because it can fill up the entire width but not the entire height so we still want it to fade or texture dot height is less than viewport dot height so if the width is less than the width of the game window and the texture's height is less than the height of the game window. Let's draw the fade. And I put this in the comment because we're going to add a separate method to do this. Now, once that's done, we need to do the sprite batch dot draw. We need to actually draw the texture. Texture. Come center texture. That's the vector two. And the color is going to be new color. And that's going to be color dot white. We want 